Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to, I think, our second uh, webinar of the year with Workplace Solutions. Thank you all for attending. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, what the year ahead looks like with, um, with Workplace Solutions, and um, we might be giving you back a little time. I don't think we're going to take more than uh, 25 or 30 minutes. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat. Or if there's a Q&A function, do that as well. Marnie is backstage and she'll be monitoring those. She might pop onto the screen as well to uh, help moderate those. So just the things we'll quickly go through today is the acquisition and op the acquisition by Dejard and the opportunities presented. We're going to look at some key initiatives that are have come about based on the acquisition. The expansion of our team. These are the, some of the initiatives we'll be discussing. The business models that we work with. Um, a role that we're de developing called Customer Experience Navigation. We're going to talk about the, our plans for digitalization and automation. Then we have something, a really cool product we're bringing out on an exclusive basis called CRISP. And then we'll have a little, little chat at the end about how Workplace Solutions can help. If you are looking to either, if you maybe are already in group with us and Workplace Solutions with us, thank you very much. But if you're looking to maybe expand your business or move into the group market or looking to do group a little bit differently or workplace solutions a little differently. Um, of course, we're really interested to engage with you and hopefully you'll learn a bit today about how we work. So as everybody is probably aware, Desjardins acquired uh, IDC Win All of World Source last year in March. Um, and they took a very serious interest in the workplace solutions division department and have um, agreed to invest in our future, which is terrific, terrific, sorry, terrific, um, which is a terrific thing. It's given us the ability to um, look at what some of the possibilities are that we've been exploring over the years and now secured funding for moving into those areas, which I think for both us, the advisors, and, and the marketplace, employers and plan members, there's some very promising initiatives that we have underway which Desjardins is backing. Um, so our deliverable and offering is growing in very exciting ways. Um, so the key initiatives as a result of the investment um, that, that, that are germane, I think, here are that we've expanded our workplace solutions team, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, um, primarily in business development areas, the areas that will matter from what you can see visibly and change our, um, our footprint and our service offering um, the one is the expansion of our business development team across the country. And the other one is some of the unique service and support roles that we've added into our team as well, which changed the way we will be able to support what we've been doing uh, in the past. Uh, digitalization and automation, which is a very exciting piece of, of where we're moving forward, is another key initiative of um, the that, that we're managing to move, move ahead based on the uh, support of Desjardins. So the expansion of the team so there are four new BDEs, well, there'll be a fourth. Um, these, the three that are hired are now joining. Uh, Marnie, who, as many of you know already, for Eastern Canada, is based in Ontario, has been servicing Eastern Canada. And Candy, who is based in Edmonton, has been supporting Western Canada. But we have now added Ling Wang in British Columbia. She started six business days ago. Uh, Susan Hofart, who started uh, roughly two months ago, and she's in the prairie. So she's based in Regina, supporting Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Uh, she's got a, a long history as well in that marketplace, wholesaling uh, group life and health. So many of you may know her. And Jeff Farquhar has come over to us. Also, a lot of experience uh, wholesaling. Um, and he comes to us in Halifax. We'll be looking after... The Atlantic provinces. So for those of you who already do business with us in these markets, just be aware you, you now have boots on the ground in your area. So you could leverage our services in a more personal way if that's something you'd like to explore as well. And hopefully this will give us more reach um, with some of the advices that we support there as well. Quebec, we are looking to expand into Quebec, but it's a work in progress. We hope to solve that certainly in, in the first half of this year, but certainly the year is, I think, a reasonable time frame in which to figure that out. So 
We've added a marketing and communication specialist. Lisa Friesen has moved over to us from the individual side of the business. Now, this has relevance, obviously, to our business in the marketing sense where we can communicate with our advisors in a way, in a more in a more organized and, and concentrated way. But some of what Lisa will also be doing is managing communication flows and helping us develop certain deliverables to plan sponsors and plan members on behalf of advisors. This is obviously all managed, controlled, and um, kind of directed by advisors, but we have a protocol for that, and there's more to come on that. Group Retirement Services, Inside Sales and Support Consultant. We have someone looking after the role for now on a part-time basis, but Vanessa Menendez-Rivera, who will be back from mat leave, hopefully by end of August, early September, she will be back in and running group retirement services on a full-time basis. So it'll be the first time that we have a group retirement support person uh, full-time uh, supporting our BDEs who are also supporting advisors with GRS. That said, if anyone does have GRS, GRS opportunities at the moment, please do reach out. I'm working it. Teresa Devine is working on it as well. And so we do have support. It's just, I think the equation, the mechanics of it all will change substantially when Vanessa's back full time. This next role is a very exciting one. The custom experience navigator is Carl Blake. He's based in Kitchener, Waterloo. So Carl is in the process of working quite um, diligently along with a couple of other people on the team to build out a custom experience navigation pathway. This is not a customer service role that we also offer. That's Pearl in our office here in Markham, based out of the Markham office. Um, she handles customer service things, questions and, and, and issues. Carl is working on a, on a platform which will support, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, navigation of a client through two pathways during an annual cycle, policy cycle. Those would be both plan member engagement and plan sponsor engagement. And I'm going to talk to talk to them in a moment. The next one is our 8020, our back office support, that all of the transactions are being moved over to an inside sales support consultant. That's Tr Teresa Devine. She's moving into that role full time. So this just gives more capacity for the team to support you in a more rigorous uh, and direct, complete way. So as people may be aware, we have three different service models that you can work with us on, and you can pick these case by case. Uh, the first one is our back office support where we do absolutely no client-facing work at all. You're the sole client-facing representative, and we do the back office work. We'll do the marketing report. We'll send out an RTQ for you to carriers. We'll curate. We'll then gather their proposals. We'll put those into a marketing proposal for you, brand it to you if you want, and then you, the advisor, go out, deliver that, make the sale, et cetera. We will then provide you with the documents and support the initial onboarding or the implementation of the client. Uh, then we'll provide a mid-year experience report and we'll provide you with the renewal report. But we will not do any interventions. We're not supporting interventions with clients with regard to customer service, et cetera. That's really all the advisor's role. We also won't be providing any support around customer experience navigation, et cetera. Those are specialized services that come at a, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a different service model. So this is really a back-end model where the advisor simply needs someone to run the quotes for them, do all that back-end work in the traditional group benefits market space. So one size, you know, typical defined benefit plan, experience rated plans. Those are the ones that want to come to us. They get an, a, a cost-effective mechanism of doing the back office work, but they want to handle the client-facing work all on their own. That's the right model. The next model is the advisor support model. You are, the advisor remains the primary client-facing representative, but IDC1 will attend sales meetings. We'll also do all the back office work, just like we would in the, in the back office support role, but we'll now attend client meetings, we'll support sales, we'll help with client discovery meetings if necessary, employee meetings, and we'll introduce customer experience navigation to support the advisor creating opportunities for engagements with the plan members and the plan sponsors through the year. And then the last model is where the advisor says, look, I own an executive relationship. The advisor needs to own an executive relationship. 
introduce us to the executive relationship, and then we'll take care of the group end to end. Um, and there's no involvement from the advisor, except to the extent of maybe they want to check in with their client from time to time. Obviously, it's their client. They can do that. You can do that. But they leave the entire group management to us. We take care of that. So three, uh, I think it's a, a nice, flexible model to support advisors with. Uh, it's a little differentiated in the marketplace. And um, again, advisors can choose these service models client by client. Uh, there's no need to say I've got six or seven group clients. I want all of them being taken care of under this model. If a person would prefer one or two in this model and the others in those, that model, that's fine. Or could also pass a block over to us to handle in one model, entirely up to the ad advisor's discretion. So to talk more about the custom experience navigation thing, we believe it's a, a strong differentiator in the market. I think there are very few advisors that actually engage their clients at this level. And it's hard to do. It's expensive. You need someone and you need a system in order to uh, onboard the client properly, offer them a pro an appropriate menu of uh, engagement touch points through a policy cycle. So um, we, we intend to build that process. We do it to some degree already, uh, but we're building out a rigorous process for that as well. The two pathways through a policy cycle or an arc would be plan sponsor engagement and the second one is plan member engagement. So at the time a new plan is being onboarded with IDC Win throughout and with our advisors, the onboarding process is not simply an implementation of a group insurance contract, but there's an onboarding questionnaire and 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 consult that happens to determine what it is that the client wants to. Uh, achieve for their plan members. Uh, and then there are events during the year that we can schedule, be they emails that go out or posters to be put up in lunchrooms or activities to be to be uh, managed. Maybe it's a steps competition or some kind of a wellness competition in the workplace. Uh, we can help with these webinars. We have a series of webinars and we can also build tailor-built webinars for uh, plan sponsors if they want to engage. The whole idea is to ensure client success. So these employers today are putting these plans in place. They're putting more and more complex plans in place for their employees in order to meet a variety of needs in the workplace. And without that being properly navigated and supported in terms of communication uh, and education for the plan members, very often they will default to what they knew before and only expect from the plan what they knew before, make their vision care claim or their dental claim, et cetera, and not really fully appreciate some of the other health and wellness uh, initiatives that are available there. Uh, education is a big part of it. And then as well, our, our deliverable expands beyond the payments and protection piece of group benefits into some of the wellness the wellness uh, offerings like mental health. So Inkblot is a, is a preferred provider of ours on the mental health side. Could be virtual health or telemedicine. Uh, it might be a change for life type product out of Green Shield, which is a behavioral health incentive program that rewards people for keeping healthy and for tracking properly. People may be familiar with this type of thing through Vitality. And then we are also looking to engage plan members with uh, opportunities to acquire personal benefits or uh, through the workplace as well. So kind of advantaged uh, because that they would be acquiring through their employer. So maybe a, a critical illness plan with no... Uh, evidence of insurability required, easy issue, et cetera, things like this we're making available as well. In order to deliver these things effectively, it's important to have an effective communication arc through the year to engage the plan members to ensure that they're well aware of what's available for them and not only well aware of it, but how to make use of these programs. Um, the the plan And for the plan sponsor, we found that during a plan year, and plan sponsors want to deal with a few things, claims experience and, and audit, They'd like to maybe do a plan governance review as well in terms of how many employees uh, are joining the plan, how many employees applied applied for coverage over NEMs. Are things being done in uh, accordance with best practices with managing a benefit plan? And then they also want to prepare for their pricing and their renewals. So these can be done either in one, two or three meetings, but the employer will decide uh, what the cadence of those meetings is that they want, and we'll set that up, that up in the custom experience navigation process. We'll then drive the advisors to the client if the advisor wants to be the one delivering, or we will take care of that for the 
at, at the advisor as well with the client. Uh, the two service levels that this customer experience navigation process is available in are the advisor support model and the referral direct model, but not in the back office model. It's just too costly. We wouldn't be able to do it at, at, in that uh, in that deliverable. We're digitalizing and automating. So we're implementing a new agency management system. That process is underway. So A is digitalizing all of our data, uh, booklets, um, plan designs, employers, advisors, tracking everything in there. Uh, we will be providing advisor access as soon as we've got the, the right data in for advisors to be able to access. And we'll also be making arrangements that if advisors want to get a, a buy up to a more sophisticated or maybe a uh, an interactive version of the system that we'll be providing the, the primary access to, they'll be able to do that with our vendor as well um, and then still be working on the same data set. Uh, it'll also provide us opportunities to provide secure data sharing. As many of you may be aware, I think the insurance industry is horribly lacking in uh, compliance with uh, document sharing, privacy and security, et cetera. You know, it's still shocking to see how many times people move employee data sheets, uh, et cetera, in, in, in unsecure ways. This will be, uh, provide us an opportunity for doing, for doing that. And then you will see at the bottom here, but there's a whole workflow process where we'll be automating and providing an experience where everywhere from onboarding an advisor onto into IDC Win as a workplace solutions advisor, through to supporting client discovery meetings, note taking, all the way through to RTQs, proposals, then plan sponsor onboarding, custom experience navigation, plan changes management during a, a, a client cycle, amendments, et cetera, through to renewals. We will be actually automating a number of these processes as well in the system, but automating to the extent that that augments the human process not replaces the human process. Because being that we, our agenda and our mission statement is to humanize benefits, we only see technology as a tool to make us more efficient and maybe get things, you know, to be more organized, but certainly not to replace the human beings. We think that the ability for a human being to be empathetic and to infer on a, of a, a client's needs and a, an advisor's needs, et cetera, really requires the human, the human interaction. And so we're uh, heavily invested in ensuring that we maximize the human experience to the best of our abilities. This is a very exciting initiative. We are hopeful that by the beginning of second quarter, we'll be launching this. Um, CRISP, it's um, a new proprietary platform with a unique Canadian payer provider organization, health and dental only, although we will be able to add pooled benefits as well. Um, virgin and non-virgin groups will be able to join. Quick quotes, um, and it's coming soon. So watch out for a pre-launch campaign, uh, hopefully in March. And again, this promises to be a terrific uh, program only for IDC Win advisors. No one else will be able to uh, have access to this specific pool that we'll be running. And uh, we look forward to bringing that as a solution to, to our advisors. Um, so how can we help? We've got uh, everything from the discovery process these are, if you want to go into our you know, advisor support or our referral direct models, we can do everything from supporting discovery, client solution design, product selection and matching. Uh, we can provide you with pro advisor labeled proposals. Um, we can help with plan implementation and customer experience navigation as well. So I think we've got tools that continue to evolve as well um, and a very willing and dynamic team now that is here to support you. Um, so I guess that's the end of the presentation. I was a quick one, 20 minutes, um, but you can get in touch. Here's some emails. I'll leave them on the screen. Folks, if you want, if there's, if you'd like to know more, please uh, reach out to our, our BDEs. But thanks so much for attending today and happy to give you back, I think, the better part of an hour now. I'm not sure exactly how much you had scheduled, scheduled with. So thanks, everyone, for attending.